And it is true, even Job said this about darkness. It's when you get in that darkness that you feel the presence of the Lord in a, in a different way. And know that out of that darkness can come some of the sweetest moments you've ever experienced in life. While the Holy Spirit's moving, I don't want to get in the way. I'm not, I'm not going to. I can't sing, so I'm not going to sing. Amen, won't you come up and sing for us? Whatever you desire.
Well, I thank God for His presence in this service tonight. I thank the Lord for Him being here. Don't you miss Him? I'm telling you, He's speaking to hearts. I don't know all of these needs. I don't know all of these cares. I don't have to. The Lord knows. In a service like this, when the Holy Spirit takes over, you just let Him lead you. You got a need in your home? Come and pray about it. You got a need in your life? Come and you don't have to worry about being a visitor or a member or anything like that. We'll come pray with you. And uh, I want you to listen to Robert. I'm glad there is an anchor to my soul. And it holds me through troubled times. God's answering more prayers than y'all know tonight. I thank God for it. Robert, come on, sing for us.
service together what I was going to preach on first Sunday night of the year is for our church to help me in praying that our church would have retain and keep the power of the Holy Spirit in this place and then this happened I ain't gonna get I'm not gonna get to preach tonight I just want to say that I'm glad that I grew up under this. That I got around some church people in some churches where they weren't afraid of the Holy Ghost. They weren't afraid of God taking over. And let me say that today, that whole thing has been kind of mixed up. And I've, I have been around some spiritual services when we knew I, there's no doubt the Holy Ghost is here tonight. You know that. If you're saved, you can feel it. Nobody's drawing anybody to the altar. They're coming because He's speaking to them. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. But I want to say that I have seen it substituted. We in churches and many churches substitute things for the Holy Ghost when they don't have the Holy Ghost. This is what I was going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you before we leave. But every day, would you pray for the Holy Ghost power to stay on this place? This is why we need it. It's because I don't know what family, was that family that came forward this morning? I don't know what they need. These people that have come forward, uh, this young lady right here praying, I don't know what she's praying. I don't have to know. The Holy Spirit speaking to her, that's all that matters. We're not going to do anything way out there in left field. We're not going to substitute the presence of the Holy Spirit for an act of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, He will not speak of Himself, but He'll speak of Jesus. We have seen that in the Old Testament. Remember Samson? Where did Samson's power come from? Not his hair. Don't say his hair. It come from his hair. The hair was a symbol of the vow that he made to God. To not shave his beard, to not cut his hair, to not taste wine, and to not touch a dead body. And he touched a dead body, and he tasted of the wine, and eventually he let that woman cut, her hair, cut his hair. And when he lost that power, that strength, what he lost was the presence of the Spirit of God. If you look it up in your Bible, every time Samson was touched, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. That's how he did those mighty things. And at the end, they cut his hair and the Spirit of the Lord still came upon him and knocked the whole house down. So this is what I'm telling you. A lot of churches are like Samson. They ain't got no Spirit of God and they got no strength. If Temple Baptist Church is going to have the power of God on it, we've got to have it with the Holy Ghost of God. We've got to have it in services like this where we get the I can't help it or I don't care what's happening, I need to get to God. I can tell you a couple places, you're not going to see the Holy Ghost. And some of these so-called churches that have accepted the gay lifestyle and put homosexuals in their pulpit, I'm the, 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 what is that denomination? Well, the United Methodists have accepted, who's the Episcopalians? They don't know or have, and I'm not saying all, all, all of them, I'm saying they don't know or have the Holy Spirit, 
Because there is nobody that has the Holy Spirit that knows what happened in Genesis 19 and God destroyed two cities because of homosexuality that would accept homosexuality inside their congregation. If they got any Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost is going to run it out. Not the sinners. They're going to deal with that sin. I'm just telling you it's time in this world that we have churches with the power. So much of the power of God on it, people know it when they come on the parking lot and when they come in the building. They can feel God whenever they get here. <laughs> I got so much I want to preach. I don't want to preach. I just want to tell you what God showed me this week. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, when the angel spoke to Mary, it said that that which is conceived in thee is of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost. And you say, but Jesus is the Holy Ghost. You're right, exactly. The Bible says that the angel said to Joseph, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Jesus had the Holy Ghost upon him. He was the first person that had the Holy Ghost and kept the Holy Ghost upon him and was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he began to prove it. Jairus come to him and said, my daughter is dying and I need your help. And the woman with the issue of blood got in the way, not got in the way, but she interrupted what he was doing and they came and said, your daughter is dead. And Jesus went and raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. And the crowd said, the critics said, well, she just fainted. Jesus said, wait, just wait, I'm not done. He said it this way, he said, my hour is not yet come. So then he was going down the road and they were just walking down the road. There was, no, there was no service, there was no preaching, nothing. He's just walking down the road. Here comes a widow woman with her only son in a casket and she was weeping. And the Bible said Jesus had compassion on her and he just stopped the funeral possession, reached in that casket, raised that boy from the dead. Had the Holy Ghost on him. And they said, oh, that boy wasn't dead. He was in a coma. Jesus said, wait, I'm not done, wait. I'm not done. So he went to the tomb of Lazarus after he had been dead four days. Now you know the Jews believed that the soul stayed around the body for three days. That's why Jesus waited till the fourth day. He was not only dead, he had started stinking. They didn't say, surely he, they said, we know he stinketh. We already can smell his body. We know that he's dead. And Jesus said, I'm not, I am the resurrection and the life. In the Old Testament, the Bible says that they threw a body down on the bones of Elisha and it brought that body to life. He had so much Holy Ghost in his bones. I want the Holy Ghost. You say, well, I thought we came to church to see Jesus. Yes. Holy Ghost, Jesus, God the Father, they're all the same. This is what Jesus did is Lazarus, can you imagine Lazarus? He's down there in paradise and he's seeing all those Old Testament saints and they're coming up and saying, Lazarus, hey, we heard the Messiah's come and we've heard he's come to your house. Has he eaten at your house and slept at your house? And Lazarus said, oh yeah, he's come. Let me tell you the things he's done. And Lazarus starts telling them about the blind and all that. And Lazarus says, hush, hush, wait a minute, wait. Somebody's calling me. <laughs> And he has to leave he has to leave paradise and go back because the resurrection and the life was so full of the Holy Ghost, he raised him from the dead. And the Jews said in John chapter 12, that's John chapter 11, John chapter 12. They said, now we're not only going to have to kill Jesus, we're going to have to kill Lazarus. It was nothing to the Jews to kill a man. They didn't care. They weren't, you got to understand, they were sinful. They were religious and sinful. They didn't know God. That's why John kept telling them to repent. They killed John the Baptist, they didn't think, think about it. Killing Lazarus is just killing another one, like they're gonna kill Jesus. And in chapter 12, at the table where Lazarus was sitting, they had already planned on killing Lazarus too. What happened was, within 24 hours, Jesus was going to the cross, full of the Holy Ghost. He was full of the ghost in the garden. He was full of the Holy Ghost when he was on the cross. He was full of the Holy Ghost when he was in the tomb. He's, he never lost that presence of the Holy Ghost. So they said, that little girl, she had fainted. He said, just wait, my hour's not yet come. And they said, that little boy must have been in a coma. He said, just wait, my hour's not yet come. And they said, Lazarus, now couldn't nobody do that. That right there has to be a man of God. This is the problem. 
This was, Jesus was proving to them that he was of God. And Nicodemus said, we know that only a man of God could do this. A man from God. And Jesus is proving that he is full of the Holy Ghost. And in chapter 16, John chapter 12, they had a dinner. John chapter 13, he had the Passover. John chapter 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John chapter 15, he said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. John chapter 16, the Bible says that Jesus there in that chapter begins to identify the Holy Ghost. This is his last hours on earth. John chapter 17, he's going to pray. And if you read through the prayer in John chapter 17, it won't take you any longer than two minutes to read that prayer. I mean, in just a few moments, they're coming to get him in the garden. And Jesus is talking about the most important thing on his heart. And he's telling his disciples, he said, listen guys, I got to go away. I know you're scared. I can see the fear in your heart. He said, but don't be afraid. He said, I've got to leave so that I can go to the Father and He can send another comforter. One just like me. You say, you want to know what Jesus is like? Get to know the Holy Ghost. So Jesus, He says, just wait, just wait. And then in, in, in John 12, He said, my hour has come. So they crucified Him, put Him on the cross. He commanded the very moment that His Spirit left His body. They put him in that tomb, and on the third day, he commanded his spirit to come back in that body and raise himself from the dead. That's the resurrection power you have through Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost of God. That's little of what I was going to preach tonight, but all I'm saying is I want that to stay here. I want the Holy Ghost to be in children's church so thick, under conviction that those little boys and little girls understand clearly the gospel. I want it to be so thick in here that people don't want to leave the service. I've seen them it, with tears in their eyes. As soon as the invitation starts, I've seen them shoot out the door trying to get away from that conviction. I want that conviction to follow them home. I want it to take their sleep. I want them to get saved. I want them to get born again. And I want to say this, if you've ever been in that atmosphere where the Holy Spirit is real, you will not take a counterfeit for it. So would you put it on your calendar to pray this year, every year, God put the power of the Holy Ghost on that preacher, put the power of the Holy Ghost on our singing, put the power of the Holy Ghost on our church, put the power, we cannot do this without the Holy Ghost. He said, I thought this was about Jesus. Yes, one and the same. When the Holy Spirit comes, you know what He does? He makes much of Jesus. He doesn't make much of Himself. And he's not here to confuse anybody. God is not the author of confusion. It'll all be in order. Hadn't everything tonight been in order? And the Holy Ghost is thick around here. You can't hardly see. Pass the uh, three pews in front of it. I like it. I've been in services where they've run the aisles. I've been in services at Monte Vista where they swung from the rafters. You can't get to those rafters. If you get to those rafters, you Spider-Man. You sure have And I want to say this, it don't matter whether you're, you're swinging from the rafters or shouting. If you can come in this place and fill the Holy Ghost with the power of God, that's what I desire for our church. Many people say, what's your vision for this year? I, that's all I know to tell you. That's all I came to tell you tonight is just pray. Help me pray every day. God, keep the power of God on this place. Keep the Holy Spirit here as thick as it is tonight. They're going to come and sing a song. We're going to close. We'll see in the service. Love what this song says. Bring it all to Him. If you come in here tonight and you're not saved and you don't have the Holy Ghost living inside of you, you come tonight, we'll take a Bible, we'll show you how to be saved. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost will baptize you. God will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. As soon as you get saved, He'll put the ring, the signet on your finger of the Holy Ghost when you get saved. When you become a son of God, you get the engagement promise of the seal of the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about anything supernatural. Ain't nobody going to get slain in the spirit or float across the floor. That's not what we're talking about. If you come tonight, you ask Jesus to save you, the Holy Ghost will jump right inside of you. The Bible says He'll be a guiding present in your life. That's how I know those churches don't know the Holy Ghost because the Holy Spirit would guide them out of that mess. I'm not picking on any denomination. I'm saying if Baptists do it, we ought to know the Holy Ghost left us. 
So if you're here tonight and you've got something you're going through this year that you've never faced before, God, bring it to Him. You don't have to bring it to a confessional booth. You don't have to meet me in the lobby and tell me. I'd love to help you and help you pray about it. I'd love to do that. Just bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. The Bible said, the angel said, this which is conceived in you is is conceived of the Holy Ghost of God. I want that same Holy Ghost in my prayer life. I want that same Holy Ghost in my preaching, in my studying, in my family, in my home, in my church, at this altar. I want that Holy Ghost all year long. Be good to have service like this every time we come together, wouldn't it? I want you to stand to your feet, your heads bowed and your eyes closed.